Okay, so we are, and now we are uh, streaming live um, on KUHSDenver.com. This is uh, my special guest, uh, Ms. Melissa uh, Mouton. She is the founder of uh, uh, 5280 High School. We're going to be talking about not only 5280 High School, but the, the, the education concept that she uh, has, has brought to this uh, project, which I am just like head over heels excited about. Uh, this is something that is so cool. But we'll get, we've got plenty of time to get into it. I've got to get load up a few songs and we'll get ready to do the show. We are about two minutes um, before we get, we get ready to do Conscious Conversations and I'm so happy you're with us. Please chime in, let us know that you're out there and so we can uh, get your feedback and, uh, and thank you for uh, listening to the show tonight. I know I'm forgetting to, to tell you something, uh, Melissa, but we'll fi I'll figure it out if I do, you know. Perfect. So, okay. I think what I need to do is I'll, I'll get myself set up here, and then we'll just we'll just jump in. So we'll do a show open. You'll hear me do a show open, which is um, a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of Intro. overview. Yeah. And then some prayers. And then we'll, I'm going to introduce you right off the bat because uh, I, I want to get, um, have people, you know, hear from our guests right away. And then we'll, then I'll just, from that point on, I'll just kind of guide you on as to which um, we can, and there's a lot of improvising we can do. We can talk for long segments or short segments or but really what we'll be doing is talking the entire time. Sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll have you repeat something that we were just talking about like, like this. I'll say, you know, that was really good. We need to, let's repeat that for a radio audience. Okay. And, and you'll, you'll, you'll catch why we do that. Okay. Is this a Christian show? It's, um, it's, yes, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a Christian based recovery show. Okay. It's based on recovery. Um, um, spirituality and and um, and and Christianity. Yeah. Okay. And you do shows every week or multiple times a week? Every, just once a week. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. I really do enjoy it. I've got a couple, I'm, I'm a little bit ahead of the game here, which I'm excited about. So, um, let's see, I'm, I'll go ahead and jump in. We obviously didn't change these clocks yet. <laughs> so. When you put your headphones on, should I put my headphones on? You can, yeah, because we're going to, we'll start off with radio. Okay. And you'll hear what we're doing. All right. But you don't need to, your mic won't be um, live yet. So, turns out it's, this is going to work out perfect. Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com, broadcasting worldwide from the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. It's Sunday night, November 5th, 2017, and I'm your host, Stephen Ray Watts. Well, I'm so incredibly delighted to be with you last hour's Sunday night and all time zones around the world. Sit back or 
but do whatever you do when you join us on this program and get ready for some uplifting, thought-provoking, and inspiring conversation. As always, there's going to be plenty of music tonight, and we've uh, entered into the holiday season, so I don't think it's too early for us to play a few uh, holiday songs. I'm joining in, getting an early start this year, getting to the spirit early if we can. Plenty of music and hopefully some spiritual growth over the next two hours. Conscious Conversations, right here on KUHSDenver.com. And this is a part of the song where we start with a little prayer. I feel like we're covered when we start with prayer on this show and every show. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly ask that you bring us together from all over the world for the next two hours, united as one heart and soul. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. And a second prayer tonight is very, very needed. A prayer for the victims and families of the mass shooting in Sutherland Springs, Texas. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bring your peace, comfort, strength to endure, and courage to encourage each other through this horrific massacre in Texas. Although we have no idea of why and how these things have become a part of our life, we know that in you we have the strength to endure and thy will be done somehow, some way, this will be brought to good. Help us to realize that this is the way that, the reason that we need a Savior like Jesus Christ. In Christ's name we humbly pray, amen. As we move forward with heavy hearts into this holiday season, with the news that we got today out of Texas, we are just going to realize that this is a, a reason that we boldly proclaim the good news of the gospel and that we try to look at each other with eyes of encouragement and strength to help those who are suffering. I am extremely excited tonight because we're talk talking about a, a concept of education, uh, a, a new high school that is going to be, uh, that is starting. It's 5280 High School, and it's, it's, a, it's a new concept in education. Um, I believe I'm, I, I, she'll, my guest will tell me if I'm, if I'm wrong. It's a, it's a project-based learning um, concept. We're going to hear all about it. It has elements of, of a program for recovery for young people who are, uh, have found themselves in addiction early in their lives. And I took this right off the website. Um, this is from them taking a bold and meaningful approach to education. And they're building a supportive cultural focus, a supportive culture focused on wellness with an honest, direct approach to teenage challenges. With the ultimate goal of creating prepared, thoughtful, and engaged graduates ready to excel in colleges or careers. Man, did I need this. <laughs> I needed this in the worst way. And the funny thing is, is that, well, we'll get into the, uh, get into this later, but the, the funny thing is, is I had opportunities and many good teachers and educators that I thank very, very much. Uh, but the, uh, the addiction aspect of it started early for me. And that's something that I think this, this is, this concept is um, very, uh, it's, it's groundbreaking uh, to have this type of uh, element in, our, in a school, which we'll, we'll talk more about as we go along into the evening. So it's going to be an awesome evening on Conscious Conversations. Uh, my special guest, um, founder of 5280 uh, High School, her name is Melissa Mouton, and we're going to be right back with her in just a minute, so get ready. For conscious conversations.
and welcome to Conscious Conversations on KUHSDenver.com. Give me a second and I will take care of that. There we go. We had a double intro going. I hope that doesn't happen all night long, but if it does, you know what? I'm just going to do what has to happen in order to not have that happen. If you can, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, our sponsors are uh, Live at Jack's, which is a uh, music venue that I am uh, part owner of downtown in downtown Denver at the uh, uh, pavilions, the Denver Pavilions Shopping District, and also Dot Zero, which is the band that I am um, a leader of. We are the, uh, the sponsors of this show, um, the proud sponsors of Conscious Conversations, as well as some other sponsors that we will mention coming up as the show goes along. I am uh, delighted, even though it comes with a heavy heart. It seems like this year we've had many, many uh, things that have come up with tragedies. The, the fire um, in, in, uh, in southern Florida and also the, the hurricanes and, and the shooting in, in uh, Las Vegas, uh, this shooting today, it, it makes no sense. Some people would say it's a sign of the times. I think I would rather just leave that into thy will be done, Lord, show us the way and let us encourage each other and let us try to show our way, which is to live with love and let that light of love shine. So it shines bright for those who are struggling. Maybe they can be reached and before something like this happens again. But also prayers and uh, our thoughts and heartfelt prayers go out to the families and friends of those who are suffering. I'm going to bring up my special guest microphone and introduce her. Uh, everyone, this is Melissa Mouton. Welcome, Melissa. You just bring that right up. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear Can you hear yourself? Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. It's perfect. Are you comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome to Conscious Conversations. Thanks for having me. This is great. This is something um, I've been looking forward to for a long time. We had the opportunity um, to briefly meet at uh, the Surrounded by Sound um, uh, uh, music festival that was out on the steps of the Capitol. And it was a, uh, it was a great day uh, indeed. I got a chance to uh, meet you through uh, Allison Harden and then also Rod Rushing. And, uh, but when, when they showed, they brought me up to your, your table and, and introduced me to the idea of what you were doing, it really kind of really floored me. So I, I, I'd love, what we're going to be talking about is, is the whole idea behind uh, 5280 um, High School. But I'd love to hear you uh, tell us, our audience, a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, well, I was originally born in a small town in West Texas called Big Spring and um, lived there all my life till I came up here to college. And I've pretty much lived in Colorado ever since. I've been here almost 20 years. I love it. And um, yeah, after I graduated from CU Boulder and then I was a teacher and I taught actually in North Carolina for a couple of years and moved back here and taught in Commerce City. And um, so I have, have an education background. I also have a medical background. I, after I taught for five years, decided to go to medical school and w graduated from the School of Medicine here in Denver. And um, wow. Yeah, that was in 2013. So it's been it's been a, a definite journey. And now I'm kind of molding, I'm kind of melding those two careers into 5280 High School, which is um, a high school for wellness. It has a recovery center in it as well for kids. And it's just a, a great educational environment. Can you can you tell me a little bit about uh, what your like what, what, what your expertise kind of was when in, in, in your in your medical studies? Sure. Um, I didn't go to residency, so I have a very general medicine background. Mm -hmm. I graduated with a general MD degree with a, also with a master's of public health. So okay. I 
they have a dual degree where you do uh, medical school as well as take a year to do your public health, which for me was a focus in health policy. Health. So now I'm forgive my ignorance. Health policy is that was that has to do with is that like more social work or no? It's um, Medicare, Medicaid, healthcare financing. Oh, I see. The actual it's it's federal, it's state, it's mainly federal law, but it also has state law, like Medicaid is state, for example. Right. So. Wow. That, I mean, that's that's a whole lot of education. <laughs> I mean, and then you were practically and, and when you, in your teaching part of it, were were you teaching? Uh, did you have a like primary or like K through twelve or that kind kind of high school? High school. I've, I've only ever worked in high schools. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I don't know if I could do elementary that they're just too small. They're too, they're too little. <laughs> it, it's funny that you say that because um, my mother, who uh, uh, I lost a, a, a couple years ago, she was a, she was a uh, first grade teacher for her, uh, her entire career. And she, uh, she had enjoyed teaching. She, she just loved teaching. And all the people that I've met that are, that are teachers, it, I feel like it's very similar, somewhat akin to uh, you get it kind of in your blood like musicians. You know, you once a teacher, you're always a teacher. You yeah, know? definitely. I think the, the impact you can have as a teacher is just astronomical. I mean, it's really limitless. And um, it, it, you know, every day you go to work and you know you're making an impact. Yeah. And it's not easy. It's very hard. It's very challenging. And it's always changing. So and I, lo I love that. I don't, I don't like things that are the same every day. So I, teaching is never the same every day. So it's, it's wonderful. You sound like, like you were like a very a driven student and that, um, did you, did you, was it all business for you, uh, growing up and, and, and going through high school and into, um, higher education or, or were you, you know, did you find yourself in the midst of, of, you know, the social pressures of, of. Uh, drugs and alcohol and or partying and all this kind of thing? No, I actually, when I was in high school, I was not a big partier mm -hmm. at all. And not even in college, even at CU. It just wasn't the friend group that I hung out with. Right. And I didn't really even start drinking until I graduated from college. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So now. I was a late bloomer for sure. <laughs> a late bloomer. For, so do you. Uh, my goodness, um, forgive me if, if I'm asking the wrong question, but are you are you uh, are you in recovery? Yes. Are you really? Yeah. So now I was not aware of that. No. Oh. But I I guess I I might have figured that out by the passion of what you're you're putting together. But you know the funny thing about it is, it, and I was going to bring this to you know to the uh, conversation was the idea that you know. It seemed like a no-brainer to me to ask you. Well, we need this because, from my experience, yeah, you know, I was, I was, it was on in high school, mm -hmm. and not to the point that some of the kids were that I was not able to get enough good grades, and I was very, very uh, determined and, and disciplined in my music, but man, it, the there the drinking was happening, and so. To hear you say that you were a late bloomer, lets leads me to believe that you know it, it again here again it's a disease that is hits people in different ways. Absolutely, I think the statistics now are eight out of ten or nine out of ten people who struggle with addiction when they're adults they started back when they were less than eighteen. So mm -hmm. it's either eight or nine out of ten. Most people, the large majority of people who struggle with addiction as a, as an adult did start when they were very young. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely in the minority. Yeah. Um, but I also think that, um, you know, times are shifting a little bit. I mean, the opioid crisis is probably the biggest example of how it can hit. And I, I think it usually hits later in life because people tend to, to need opioids for surgeries and stuff after they turn 18. And so I think we that statistic may be changing a little bit more recently so. right and and it just with with the i mean you know there's there's a myriad of things out there now i mean there was back when when i was going to high school as well but 
you know, definitely the, the drugs of choice back then were, were marijuana and, and alcohol, at least it, it, from the people that I was, you know, involved with, you know, but you never, other than having, say, I remember in elementary school, you know, uh, a, a group from AA, I think, came in and an Al Anon group came in and talked to us, talked to us briefly about alcohol abuse, but never anything in high school. It was either they were turning a, a, a blind eye to it, or it was one of those things that, you know, they were just, if they thought maybe it was just something beyond their control or something that parents should take care of. Well, I do think that there's this trend that's in that, you know, the way we think about things today is, um, you know, people don't like to talk about stuff. There's this sense, and I, I see it with addiction and substance use, and I also see it with depression and suicide, those type of themes that adolescents struggle with very commonly. There's this this preconceived notion where if you talk about it, if you bring it up, then it'll actually make the kids think about it more. That's not the case. All the data out there shows that it's better if you bring it up. If you talk about it, everything is better. Get it out in the open. Yes, get it out in the open. And so I think not talking about it is a problem. Mm -hmm. So that's part of what we're trying to do with 5280 is not, not shove it under the rug, but acknowledge the fact that there are these issues and that if you're struggling with it, there is help, there is a solution, there is something we can do about it and not just ignoring it or pretending it doesn't exist. You know, and it seems like such a great place and time to start because if you catch it at the age of, you know, this is a hard time. It's a hard, it's a hard time for anybody to grow up and be a teenager, but now especially, I mean, I just think it's excruciatingly hard to be a teenager in this world now. First, you know, you know, technology is moving so fast. They seem to be able to just, just get it, you know, which I, which I love. <laughs> but, you know, there's so many, there's so much out there, you know, if you can, if you can shape their minds, first of all, to believe that they can have, they can live a joyful, uh, wonderful life without any type of uh, drugs or alcohol or mind benders of any kind, it, and get them early, that can be a powerful, powerful, that, that idea is a power, powerful uh, concept. Well, it's true that the more high school students don't drink and don't have a desire to drink or do drugs than those who do. And there's this perception again that all the kids are doing it. And so that if you feel that this peer pressure, but it's really not true. And they've done they've done surveys wow. every year. They do a survey here in Colorado. It's called the Healthy Kids Colorado Survey, and they track these things. And it shows every single year. It shows that while there is a group of, of kids who do use drugs and drink on a regular basis, it is not the majority. And so I think that again is a misperception. There are scores of of teens today that don't want to drink and don't want to do drugs and want to be surrounded by people who who, who are the same way but they there's this, this this mistaken belief that you're not cool if you don't do it but they don't realize that it, it's actually the minority wow i mean i'm guilty as charged on because i totally yeah. thought it was just one because i guess it was from my experience you know I, I started drinking so early and it just seemed to be that everybody was you know and um, the one, the kids that the kids that didn't weren't, you know, they're just they're too different, you know. So you don't hang hang around with them. But that is very, very um, how refreshing to hear that in, that that information. I mean, there still is, is a, a large problem that we have to deal with. I'm not saying that nobody's doing it, but mm -hmm. it definitely is a minority for sure. Are you get like kind of? We're, we're into a two minutes before we go into uh, some music and we'll come back to this, but do you find that, uh, that is, is marijuana, the, uh, the psychic breaks that are happening um, with, with the concentrated marijuana, is that a, a definite uh, problem with our youth right now? You know, I can't answer that. I do know that 
the number two drugs of choice for youth are marijuana and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And that if you think about everything else, it's a small percentage. It's less than 10% of teen users are using anything other than marijuana and alcohol. So, okay. but I don't know about the concentration and how that is trending. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it, it's interesting to me because, you know, what I've learned through, through talking with certain people uh, that I've been honored enough and lucky enough to have on the show is, is that one of the things that happened is, is we, we voted in, uh, we voted in the, the legalization before we were able to get, uh, you know, the, the constraints on how powerful the, the, the THC could, levels could be, you know, and it's a lot different than when I was, when I was a kid from what I understand. And you know, with with the uh, the uh, the edibles and all those kind of things. Well, we've we've had a good opening segment, a, a chance to to get to know uh, Melissa a little bit. And wow, what an education and what a, what a road! I'm gonna um, leave it up to her how much she wants to talk about um, her path and recovery. But this this is something that we we do like to talk about. With 18 seconds, I want to uh, welcome in Karen. Hey, Karen, it's great to to have you uh, on the show again, all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. I hope you're doing well out there. And I appreciate you uh, chiming in to Conscious Conversations this evening. This is Chris Tomlin on KUHSDenver.com. Okay, and we're clear from radio. So we can take these off and get ready for... Uh, Get ready for the next one. We'll we'll we got just a couple of songs, and we'll. Uh, I'm gonna. I can't. I can't resist. I gotta play a, uh, a Christmas song. A Christmas song. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Even though it's it, though it's a hint, a hymn. So I gotta get my commercials up here real quick. So give me just a second, Melissa. And... Sure. Let's see. So I'm gonna now. Are you comfortable um, uh, talking with a little bit of music going on in the background? Yeah, sure. So now let me let me ask you this. Um, when I get the let me get this is me doing two things at once. Okay. They understand when they when they see this. So. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah, do whatever you need to do. I'm just here relaxed. Good, good. That's that's what I was hoping. Let's see. So we've got two commercials coming up after a couple of songs, and then we'll get right into another segment. Well, I was a graduate of, uh, of CU Denver, oh, nice. um, but um, it's always nice that I had a, a lot of friends uh, that graduated from up in Boulder. So we, we were up in Boulder quite a bit. Uh, even though we didn't go to the, the okay. music school up there, but um, so now this is that video audio too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely both, and it it'll pick up. It, it's amazing how much you know it, how clearly it picks up, and we get a chance to uh, to really see you know the, the the interaction and stuff, especially with with this. And it's funny because. Then there's even another camera here. There's another camera that we could roll too, and I'm probably going to replace this one, the live Facebook, with this one because you can, you can kind of um, produce.